Hey everybody, Felicia here with another Vera Bradley bag of the day. Um, today I um, am doing a sort of a viewer request um, uh, comparing the um, reversible tote to um, the uh, carry-all crossbody. These aren't two um, bags that I normally would think to compare because they're two they have two different functions, right? One's a shoulder bag and one is a crossbody. But um, I could see why someone would want to get a look at both of them because they are similar in size, although not exactly. So um, neither of these was my bag of the day. My bag of the day was my, my new love. <laughs> <laughs> the Go Ahead Convertible Cross Body, which is a factory outlet um, style. And this pattern is Hilo Meadow for people who haven't seen my recent videos um, about this bag. But I have it here so that I can take out the stuff from it and put it in the other bags as I go along just to get a sense for what will fit, uh, how much will fit. And I, I, I will, I will put, uh, put this on at some point. I did have a couple of my other carry-all uh, crossbodies out just to talk a little bit about the patterns. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> um, but uh, I can mainly use this one. Um, yeah, I guess I can. Well, let me just start with the reversible tote. This is Imperial. The pattern is Imperial Toile. I can put the year in the um, video description because I, off the top of my head, I don't remember it. I know I've featured this in a, another video um, just briefly when I was talking about patterns that I think can work as neutrals. So I haven't really ever just shown this at any length, so I figured I'd use this one just for variety. So I know I, I've used my other uh, reversible totes in other videos. Um, because I just love the bag so much. So you can see it is a, a sh basically a shoulder bag with a, a non-removable strap. This is it as far as the strap goes. And since with a crossbody versus a regular bag, a strap is kind of a big, you know, a big part of it. I thought I'd start with talking by talking about the strap. So the strap drop here. about nine nine and a half and that's so that's it you know you're you're kind of stuck with that um, the opening it's a it's just a magnetic closure covered magnetic closure but I have talked about this in other videos about this bag and I love this magnetic closure because it's a it's a large magnet it, it feels like it's two pieces of sort of square magnet um, positioned here on each side and so they find each other you know very easily and also that magnet covers a big portion of the opening so I feel like you get a bit more security than you would with just that tiny like round uh, covered magnet or uh, the, re the uncovered magnetic closure. The opening, the top opening, is about 11 and from top to bottom here it's about 10 and across from side to side is about 12 at the top. Yeah, 12 at the bottom. So, um, and it has, oops, has east-west slip pockets. They're a little on the small side, you know, the opening at any rate. Probably because, you know, that's sort of the bag style is to be a little bit wider, wider at the bottom and then taper towards the top. Um, so the, the slip pocket does get wider at the bottom, and it does go down to the bottom of the bag here, but the opening is a little bit more narrow. So you may not be able to get a large phone in there. I mean, I can slip my my tiny phone in there. I think I have it on me. <laughs> I may have to be updating soon. My phone seems to be in the process of dying. But anyway, so, you know, that fits in there very easily. But this is an unusually small phone, and not many people are using a phone like this anymore. <laughs> um, except me and my dad. <laughs> um, I guess you could slip keys in there. I could see putting keys in there. Anyway, so um, the whole point, right, of the, uh, what I do like about the reversible tote also 
is its use of um, two different kinds of quilting. It's got this uh, horizontal sort of channel uh, quilting up top on the top band. But then the body of the back has your traditional diamond quilting. I love this pattern. I love this uh, palace kind of structure. And I love the Asian, you know, motif, the whole Asian look of it. I love it. Very elegant, I think. And like I said, oh, I'm not a big brown person. I do feel like this functions well as a neutral. Um, just this sort of two-tone white and a color. But it, it works really well as a neutral. Um, so the point of a reversible bag, right, is that it's truly reversible. There's no tag on the inside, and you can fully reverse it, and it is constructed in, in the same way. So there are the side east-west slip pockets, again, uh, trimmed with the trim fabric. That's the same on both sides. And this is the interior pattern here sort of like little medallions but they're sort of like flowers in those circles I don't know if I would ever carry this print uh, reversed like this I think it does look very much like a lining and like I've said in other videos with this bag like kind of, who are you fooling <laughs> um, there are a couple of patterns I would reverse but I don't think this is one of them um, that's okay. And this bag is constructed, and I've talked about this in another one of my reversible tote videos, um, with two layers of quilted fabric making up the walls of the bag. So you can pull them apart. So, and feel, you can feel them. There are two layers of quilted fabric. So that makes this bag keep its structure. Even though it's a slouchy looking bag, it stands up well. Ouch. See, it doesn't... It doesn't flop. It has really, even though it's a soft looking bag with, you know, pleat details here on both sides, when you plop it down, it stays like that. Empty, filled with stuff, it stays like this, holds its shape really well, and it's very comfortable to wear. I'm going to see what I can get in here now and just put it on. Oh, for anyone who's curious how they might, how these might compare, the, this is the, again, the The go ahead convertible crossbody and the reversible tote. So they're both sort of sitting up kind of high, which is what the way I like my shoulder bags to sit. And you can see, even with nothing in it, this bag keeps nice shape. I mean, it looks like there's stuff in there. Okay, so let's see what I can get in here. I have a feeling because. Because of that double wall construction on this bag and the pleat details, which um, occur on both sides of the bag, inside and outside, um, so that's adding thickness to the wall, the walls of the bag, and so all that cuts down. I feel like a little bit on interior space. So I tend when I'm when I am carrying this bag, I tend not to take my GPS pouch because I, I feel like it kind of really cramp crowds it up. Like this is my GPS pouch. So we'll start putting in there and see what happens. This is my pouch of charger cords. It's not really full. It tends to be rather floppy and malleable. So even though it looks big, it doesn't really take up a lot of space. Uh, well, this is not a typical thing. It's dog medicine. <laughs> we, we, can, we can forego that. Um, iPad mini. Uh, wallet, which today is the one for the money, so it's a smaller wallet. Again, my phone and iPod. It does all fit, and it does close, although I feel like I have to help the magnet along there because of that GPS pouch right over there. <laughs> But it does all fit, feels good. The bottom doesn't uh, 
slouch that much. It looks nice. I'll straighten myself out. <laughs> um, so that's the reversible tote. And it is, it doesn't have a hard base and it is machine washable. I have washed all of mine, including this one. No problems, no problems. Um, so, then we get to the um, carry-all crossbody. This is really the only crossbody that I have that I like, really like wearing as a crossbody. It doesn't bug me. The other ones, I think I would really be hard-pressed to wear them that way. I'd have to be kind of in a desperate situation where I really needed to uh, have my arms and hands free and not want my bag slipping off my body. Um, like if I had small kids or something that I was, you know, wrangling. <laughs> um, I get my tape measure off the floor. <laughs> so, the top on this one, if you put them um, side by side, well, I, I can do that once I stand up and get out of the way, but just to show because they are slight, uh, proportioned slightly differently. Like, I feel like this is wider and a little squat. This one is narrower and a little taller. So up top, and the, op the opening up top kind of curves down, which is nice. And it just makes, gives it a nice soft look as opposed to like some of the hipsters which go straight across the top, I think. This is about nine and a half, ten inch opening. This was bigger, right? I think this was 11 or 12. Yeah, almost almost 11. And so from top to bottom, the crossbody is about nine and a half. I think this one was 10. Did I say it was 10? No memory anymore. 10. 10, 10, almost 10 and a half. So just a little bit. What was this again? Nine and a half. So it is, it is, well, this is looking shorter probably because it's got stuff in it. This might look a little shorter too. But like I said, the dimension, the proportions, like the aspect ratio of a TV, right? That, that's what's looking different is that even though this may still, this measurement base may still be taller, this bag looks, this looks wider, this bag looks narrower. It's a different kind of look, a narrower look. So if I go across the bag to the piping, it's just a little bit under 11. But the bag tends to, see like the pipe, the, the piping is here, but the bag extends a little, curves out a little bit on the sides. So if I measure that, that gets me to about 14. But when you put stuff in there, you know, it changes, changes all that slightly. How, how those numbers are. The base is about 11 by 5. What was the base here? About 4 by 12. This does, again, no, it does have a base, but it's not removable. I don't know what it's made out of can't tell by feeling it. It's thin and flexible. You can feel the edges of it in there. But I, have, I haven't washed this one um, or this one because I bought them new. But I have washed this one. And it went through the washing machine fine. I've washed it a number of times. And it has gone through fine. And the reason that I, I brought this out was just to show a difference in uh, the use how it looks when a trim, coordinating trim is used. So this pattern is Havana Rose, which uh, was my f introduction to Vera. I mean, I, I knew about Vera, uh, obviously, but um, the first bag that I got was in Havana Rose. So it was really the first pattern I fell in love with that started this whole insane obsession. <laughs> and I just love the yellow roses in this pattern. And so, um, you know, I was pleased when I, I ordered this, I think, from an online outlet sale. I was pleased with the pattern placement, especially because, you know, it's got a full butterfly there on the front. And it's got some more uh, pieces of butterfly there. What I like so much about this pattern is that it's photorealistic. Right? I mean, it, it looks like it is generated from photos. I mean, it, to me, it looks like 
these are photographs of roses that were then incorporated into this color pattern, which reminds me a lot of the photo silk screen that Andy Warhol did, um, where if you're familiar with his large celebrity portraits, where he takes a black and white photo of them, and then I mean, I, I've done photo silk screen, so it's kind of hard to explain all the process and the chemicals and everything, but then you can lay color over that uh, photo screen that you've adhered to a screen. Um, but anyway, that's what this looks like, where there was probably a black and white image of roses and color was then laid down over. I'm not saying that's how this was made, but it just lo has that look to me. And so for me, it's very kind of a pop art kind of look. And that's why I love this bag so much. This is the back. Again, you can see a butterfly there and another one up there. And that's a good big red rose front and center with that other yellow rose. I mean, I was just so pleased with this pattern placement. That was the side. Another butterfly there. Another butterfly there. I mean, I really did good with the butterflies on this for not having picked it out in person. That's the bottom. I feel like I hear licking. My love, my love, please stop doing that, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, this doesn't have the coordinating cotton lining, unfortunately, that comes, you know, was coming with Havana Rose, that dot pattern that's uh, in other. Havana Rose items. Unfortunately, this is just a black interior, which I don't like at all. The big black hole in there. What are you going to do? <laughs> okay, so, oh, on, before I forget, pockets. This is two slip pockets on the front. They go all the way down, and they're sort of tacked together and tacked in the center. Um, so they, there's no getting through there. They are two separate pockets all the way down to the bottom of the bag. Um, on the back, it's a zipper pocket. All soft zipper, plastic zippers on this bag, which is nice. Uh, to, you know, takes up generous pocket, takes up the full uh, dimensions of the, the bag. And I feel like even though this bag looks a little on the small side, so here's a top zip. Um, you can get a lot in here, probably because the base is a, is a good, generous size. So there really is a, a lot of space in there. Um, the strap, strap drop. So this is the shortest configuration. The strap is not removable. So this is the shortest configuration for the strap, crossbody strap. And the strap drop is 13. So when I want to wear this as a shoulder bag, that's kind of a long strap drop for me. That's not a strap drop that I'm crazy about. Um, I don't like where it hits on my body. And it extends the longest. Uh, the longest length of this strap. There we go. Okay. And I'm including the hardware, like I always say, because it adds a little bit of length. Not too much on this bag, but you know, it always does add a little length. I don't know on, on the viewer website how they measure it, do their measurements. It's like 51 and a half at its longest extension which I'm sure if I put it on, it would be like down to my knees. I mean, it's not, that's not where I would wear the bag. Okay, so let me just see what I can get in there. Oh, before I forget. So this, you know, this was post coordinating trim days, um, unfortunately. So same thing with this pattern, which is Bohemian Blooms. This was the first, uh, of the style that I got a long time ago. Um, and the reason I had it out is because I just wanted to show people who maybe are a little unsure sometimes of what colors to coordinate with certain patterns. And this might, they might think this is a hard one. It's really not so hard. If you look at it just with what I'm wearing today, even, which sort of relates to sometimes the color theory that I talk about with the color wheel. So that's why I had this out, but I can do that at the end of the video. 
But this was a bag. This is Moon Blooms, and this was one that makes use of the coordinating trim. And just in case people are curious, this is where it is. This is where it is. It runs down the center of the uh, with the on the side with the slip pockets. So I, was, I kind of like that about about this. Well, I love Moon Blooms, but I, I just you know it's a nice. It's always nice to get a little touch of that coordinating trim, and that's how it's used on this bag. Okay, so let me try to load it up. I feel like you are still licking or doing something that I'm not crazy about on the bed, okay? I don't want that slobbery thing on the bed. I'm sorry. I'm ruining your fun. Okay. So. Again, GPS pouch. I don't know that I always would take that, but I'm just using it for, as an experiment to see if it fits. Coordinating, I mean, um, <laughs> is it not coordinating? The charger cord pouch. Small wallet. Inside, there are, I forgot to mention, there are you can see it. You can see it in this one. There are two uh, slip pockets inside. Um, it's hard to see in here because it is kind of dark. But there are two slip pockets on that wall of the bag, and they're a good size. They go down to the bottom. The other wall of the bag doesn't have anything. Please stop licking on this bag. iPod. You can put that in one of the um, slip pockets. What did I just say to you? And I know you know what I'm talking about. Phone and other slip pocket. And my iPad mini. So it all fits in there easy, no problem. It does feel a little heavy, but it's all right. So if I put it on at its shortest, um, you know, that's where it hits on me, which I feel like as for a shoulder bag, it's a, another stellar outfit. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not very stylish today. Um, I, I, to me, this, this length for a shoulder bag drop, strap drop is a little traditional. And so, um, not my first choice. I do like it shorter. But it doesn't bug me enough with this bag to try to jerry-rig it shorter. I feel like, some, I think it's something about the dimensions, uh, the proportions of this bag. The tallness of it. It, it has a look where it's, it looks tall rather than wide and squat. And for some reason, it, with this longer drop, I think it still has a more modern look. So I'm okay with it. I just love the pattern. That, I mean, that looks great right there, that rose. And I feel like there's no, at least on this one, oh, there is a label. It is there. But I mean, again, I never, I don't always pay attention to what side is out, you know, as far as the label goes. So, this is what they would look like, you know, as shoulder bags. You know, this is much shorter. So. But you definitely can get the same amount of stuff in there. I feel like this accommodates my, my stuff with the GPS pouch better. I definitely would not be taking the GPS pouch in this. Just don't like it to feel so stuffed. And I could even get more in here. I mean, look how, you know, it flops down. So. There's more space up top here. So then to put it on crossbody, and this one I have worn crossbody. That doesn't look quite long enough, I don't think. I've worn this and the Bohemian Blooms uh, crossbody. I haven't worn the Moon Blooms yet because I'm still. Uh, I wanted to wash the strap one more time, and I just have never gotten around to it. It does feel, I feel like I need a little bit more length. 
just a little, not much. Just a little close to my close to my chest for some reason. You know, it would not kill you to listen to me and not lick for a little bit, okay? Because I know it's going to end up with you looking on the bed again. So there. I mean, I think it looks good. I mean, it's definitely, there's something, again, about this particular shape where, like, a bag like this that's crossbody is wider. And I, I, I think I like the way this looks a little bit better as a cross body. I don't know, just, I just thought it had a nice profile. I feel like it doesn't look like it's sticking out too much. That's probably because it's nice and sort of slim up top, but then you get the space down at the bottom. And that pink rose looks good. <laughs> okay, so so that was that. That's the how they sort of compare, you know, size wise. You can really see how wide from front to back uh, it is this way, and it it does hold that shape well. Now I did just want to show for people who maybe have want are wondering with a pattern that has unusual colors. Uh, oranges, people that sometimes don't know what to do with orange. Um, the red is very bright in here. It's a real like vermilion red here. Oh my god, please stop licking your feet on this bed. Um, and there's some sort of like a muted coral color here. Let me get some good color. Yeah. So it's kind of, and it's sort of like a burgundy color here with this vermilion kind of color and then all this beige. And this beige khaki kind of color um, kind of ties in with, uh, this is sort of a, a light camo. But I think that you can see if you sort of think outside the box a little bit with your colors, you can see how this kind of goes, right? This. This, the leaves, the sort of neutral color leaves, kind of tie into this. So this, this, this pattern looks really good with any kind of olive green, any kind of fatigue, army fatigue kind of color. This looks great. Um, and this, these red tones really pop against that. But, like I was just saying in another video, blue and orange are complementary colors meaning they fall opposite on each other on the color wheel and complementary colors enhance each other. They really flatter each other and they make each other look a little bit more vibrant um, when using combination. And so I think that that's why this pattern is popping nice against this kind of like a, a soft blue, a soft, almost a teal kind of color. And so it's just, just to give people an idea of how they can they don't have to worry about matching so much because sometimes contrast also works really well. And I think this is an example of that. Also, I noticed that this color shirt kind of picks up the, the leaf, the teal leaf colors in Hilo Meadow. Um, so I didn't do that intentionally. I just wanted to wear this bag and I, had, or I was already dressed and so I just threw it on, but I think it ended up working. I kind of lucked out. So anyway, I just thought I would mention that for for people about the color, but I, I hope that that was helpful. Um, again, this was the uh, for the bag styles. This is the carry all crossbody bag, a retired style, of course, but you can find it easily. It's, I mean, it's often in the Vera Bradley online outlet um, sales, and I've seen it listed on Amazon. So, um, and I got. Oops. <laughs> I got this one in Steinmart. Um, and they had a, I think they had lilac tapestry. They had some other, no, maybe it wasn't lilac tapestry, but there was a purple a pattern in there recently um, uh, of this style bag. So um, you can find it around, but not without too much trouble. And this is their reversible tote, also retired. 
the older style. So um, I hope that was helpful. I don't know if that was helpful. You can see from the, there's a side view. <laughs> Never remember. I always sort of askew when my camera is always reversed. <laughs> there. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching and hopefully we'll